Hey everybody, this is Gavin. Uh, I want to do a quick tutorial on uh, 3D Coat, which is a really cool 3D uh, 3D sculpting and uh, uh, texturing software. Um, a few years ago, I was looking for a good 3D app uh, to kind of like get started. Uh, I'm primarily a, a concept artist um, and character design but I eventually kind of wanted to branch into sculpting and, and some base mesh modeling and, and just basic modeling and stuff like that. Um, seemed like uh, something like ZBrush or some other kind of sculpting software would probably be the, the best uh, start for me coming from like a more of an art background. Um, something where I could kind of uh, create stuff with less uh, technical hurdles uh, to overcome. So. Uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of friends in 3D and uh, ask them advice, uh, you know, what should I learn? Should I learn Mudbox? Should I learn ZBrush? Should I learn um, Silo? And everyone gave me like some different suggestions and uh, I tried out several different programs um, and uh, I kind of just settled on to uh, this program, 3D Coat, which I had never heard of. Um, a friend of mine uh, told me about a big time ZBrush guy. Uh, this guy named Donald, Donald Anderson, uh, really, really good ZBrush sculptor. He recommended it to me. He said he didn't even use it himself, um, but he said it's like kind of an up-and-coming program. This was about three years ago, and um, I'm like, you know, you guys know me, I'm pretty game to try any software. So I, I downloaded it, I tried it out, and like within, oh sorry, another one that I tried that I, that I, that I liked was actually Moto, the Moto Sculpting. Um, I found it really, really neat, um, but I, tr I got it to work once and then I tried again and I couldn't figure out how I got it working and it just seemed a little bit more complicated than, uh, than I was looking for. So anyways, back to this 3D coat. Um, I tried it and, uh, I tried it after I tried the Moto one and it had a very, uh, similar feel. It was just like totally free and uh and loose it was just i could do things that i was like wow like that's crazy because i tried zbrush also and while it was really nice um i ran into a few problems i know that they've since uh, uh corrected some of these issues uh like with the dynamesh um i also tried sculpture sorry that's another one i tried um which was pretty free uh free form but it, it just seemed a little bit too limited and um and uh yeah so and it, cra it kept crashing but um anyways bring back to uh to 3 coat i tried it and uh i was like blown away i just had this amazing sense of freedom um one of the things that you might not know about 3 coat is that it's based on voxel technology so again i came in it to came in it primarily for a sculpting app um it does a lot more than that uh, it does uh, read topology really well. Um, you can set up your UVs within the program, and then you can go on to actually paint on top of those UVs um, on top of your 3D model <clears throat> uh, with layers and export a PSD if you want to. It's pretty amazing. Um, but anyways, I, I started with uh, just the sculpting, and one thing you'll find in 3D Coat, it, since it's based on voxels, you can imagine... Uh, it's basically 3D pixels, um, so there's no topology constraint that I have to worry about. I don't have to worry about polygon stretching or anything like that. Uh, I could just freely sculpt um, as far as I want. It's pretty crazy. Um, and the other thing that I really liked is that I, I pretty much already knew how to use it, and, and this is one of the reasons why I say it's very artist friendly. Most artists that I know, most digital artists, professionals especially, um, will know how to use Photoshop already. Um, you'll know you to use the square brackets for sizing up and down your brush. Um, 3D coat doesn't like differentiate from that. It just it kind of uses those uh, same hotkeys. So I can just size up and down my brush with those uh, square brackets that I'm used to doing. Um, navigation is really simple. You come into the program, anywhere your cursor is off the model, you don't have to press any other button. Just put your cursor down and your model rotates. Um, if I uh, middle mouse uh, drag, this is hovering my uh, stylus above the screen. Um, I get a zoom in, zoom out. And 
if I middle mouse and or sorry right right click and um, sorry right click is hover right click is uh, zoom in zoom out and then hover or right click and touching the screen is uh, my pan so navigation right off the bat I didn't have to worry about pressing alt I didn't have to I didn't have any hurdle to kind of like overcome just to get into the software it was just kind of like right, there you go um, and then I think the first time I used it you know I just played around different shaders I was like whoa cool that's awesome you know um, I just had fun like looking at different shaders um, which are here I think in the default uh, build there over here on the side somewhere but anyways all these windows are, are uh, movable dockable just like what you're used to in uh, Photoshop um, so again another really uh, helpful uh, in terms of that learning curve if you're coming from a program like Photoshop, long story short um, you will already you have a very big leg up on using uh, uh, 3d code okay so again uh, I'm using my grow tool here right now in the voxel mode and as you can see uh, it's just kind of just building this form out as much as I want you know so that's pretty cool if I want to erase it I'll hit backspace and I can delete everything um, I can't remember if that's a hotkey that I set up or not but um, it's pretty cool uh, regardless and then if I want to create something new I can uh, create a new primitive which is the standard way um, and all these menus I can just drag I can just flick to slide up and down pretty cool um, so I can just start back with my default sphere I'll just press enter to get that and I'll go back to my grow brush and uh, if I press control um, on a tool so that's just the regular function uh, if I press control it will toggle into the invert action mode um, so if I hold down control I get the opposite and you'll see that's like that kind of blew me away when I first saw that um, so as, I, as I'm just doing the regular brush I'm building up my form but then if I hold control it decreases the form all the way to the point where it punches through to the other side it's like literally melting a hole through um, my, my 3d form um, this blew me away because this is where in programs like ZBrush or Mudbox this is kind of where you run into a wall um, because the program is not designed to do that and that's kind of one of the most innovative features of 3d code is that it's a, a voxel based um, modeling software so basically what that means is again it's 3d pixels um, there's an adaptive mesh I just tapped into wireframe mode here there's an adaptive mesh that builds itself um, over the 3d form so it just it just kind of like creates as needed um, and it's kind of pretty much it's not a pretty looking mesh uh, but it basically gets the form down uh, to what you need okay and there's a shader that lets you see it a little bit better and as you can see it just kind of builds itself out punching holes through it it's it's really amazing this feeling of uh, building up forms and then eroding it um, so yeah so that's kind of like my first foray into 3d coat was just like and I was like jumping up and down I was so happy like when I found this program I, because you know how sometimes when you're like searching for something searching for something and you're looking for it and then you find it and you're like okay I found I found the thing that I'm looking for um, and this was a three years ago and 3d coat has gotten a lot a lot better since then so uh, I want to take you through some of the key features um, this this video is primarily dedicated towards um, people like myself uh, who come from like a maybe more artistic background and are looking to maybe get into 3d and are looking for like that nice uh, segue um, that perfect entry point uh, to get into 3d software I know a lot of people have gotten into ZBrush uh, the problem that I find with ZBrush is building out a base mesh um, you have to have some background knowledge ideally in a in a base mesh modeling software like a, a Maya or a, a Moto or um, a th th a 3D Studio Max or even a Blender. Blender is the one that I use um, building out like a simple mesh bring into ZBrush subdividing that model so on and so forth um, you can also use Z spheres in ZBrush or you can uh, I think now there's DynaMesh where you can just kind of 
it's more like 3D code where you just kind of build things, uh, you know, uh, uh, from scratch. And I think they kind of uh, they purchased um, Sculptress, and, and I think they got some technology from that software. But anyways, um, back to this program. Uh, it's really I forget what I was saying now. Um, it's very it's very good for uh, just kind of doing the whole process, kind of blocking things out. Um, you don't need to come in with like a base mesh. You can just grow a form from like nothing, right? I think that's kind of the point that I was uh, I was trying to make. Let me back up here and I'll go back to my default shader. So again, you saw I was just able to build this form out from nothing. That's just using one tool. And obviously there's a smooth uh, smooth tool. And you'll see what the smooth tool does here in uh, voxel mode is it just kind of erodes my form. I think I can't even punch holes through with this smooth tool if I use it long enough on a thin area it'll just eventually break apart which is really cool um, very different from any other uh, 3d software that you'll probably use um, what when you would need this I don't know um, sometimes I find it helpful um, if I want to kind of erode a certain area if I want to get a thin form um, next to a, a bigger form but uh, Anyways, it's just kind of an interesting uh, thing, and, and it's, it has a lot of uh, potential applications, uh, many of which I'm sure have not been uh, fully explored. Um, so again, I'll, I'll just start start walking you through some of the key features that I find uh, are, are, are artist friendly in uh, in 3D Coat. So first is the voxels. Just kind of you can kind of move things as much as you want, uh, build things out from nothing. Um, Pull them back. Um, to add to that, we have our uh, our Boolean operations, uh, so that we can kind of create stuff or uh, remove stuff on the fly. And this is another key feature in 3D Code. Uh, up here, you have this uh, this kind of like uh, icon of the type of brush that you're using. And if I go back to my Grow tool you'll see I have all these options so I have different types of pens these are what you'd see in Photoshop like you know uh, shape dynamics with no uh, opacity dynamics um, or just opacity dynamics with no shape dynamics uh, both opacity dynamics and shape dynamics um, so on and so forth different modes uh, line mode uh, spline mode um, stamp mode uh, square uh, rectangle, etc. So this is kind of like um, kind of a unique thing in uh, in this program. I can just select this type of brush, and I'll draw a shape, any shape, and it'll create that uh, it'll create that form. And the the way the form works is the the depth of it is dependent on the size of my brush. So there's several tools in 3D Coat that you can use like this but uh, it's it's kind of like rather than me showing you everything uh, I recommend getting in there and trying it out for yourself and seeing what works for you and what doesn't but you can imagine this is uh, pretty quick to, to use your design skills um, to work out some basic uh, form that you can uh, then build on later on. And that's very rudimentary. Um, obviously, if I was doing this for real, I would uh, pay a little bit more time on doing it. Um, OK, so that's that's basically uh, the Boolean. So I, I showed you growing um, something. We also have this tool called Cut Off, which does exactly what you would imagine. Uh, right now, I have my rectangle selected. So if I, if I do that, it'll cut my uh, geometry wherever my rectangle is drawn so again really really cool um, you're seeing I'm getting this kind of like uh, uh, messy geometry on the corners here and that's just because my my mesh is relatively low poly right now um, if I were to increase the resolution of my mesh which I can do down here um, this basically subdivides the entire mesh so it takes up quite a bit of space but uh, I'll do that and you see I get a, a nicer cleaner result and my performance is still pretty good okay um, so that's my cutoff tool and again up here we call this the e-panel 
we have different options so I'll use my uh, uh, lasso selection uh, kind of tool and I can any shape that I want I can erase just like that and uh, what else do we have we also have a spline mode so I can uh, if I want to be more precise with my shape I can uh, create a spline and I have different options here so can it be a B spline um, which I'll uncheck I want it to be more of a standard kind of spline mode and I can press escape and then I can go in and edit uh, these points after I've drawn them and I can right click on it to change the mode so I can make it sharp like so I can make it uh, there's three different options so this is B spline mode where it's this uh, this point is just a uh, it's uh, kinda like a, a weight it's it's kind of like pulling the line but it's actually not connected to the line if I right click again the line goes through the point and if I right click again then the point becomes a sharp point <clears throat> like so okay and then once I'm cool with that I can just press enter and it will erase that and I think it will work I can keep it yeah so that's kinda cool too um, I can keep that shape and it just takes the two dimensional uh, two dimensional shape that it creates depending on what angle I'm looking and it leaves it there and as I press enter it'll just reuse that shape over and over so that's a pretty neat uh, neat feature and I can still edit it as I'm going so this is not something I use that much but you can just see the applications for it are pretty pretty cool that's pretty neat okay so escape again to get rid of that Okay, another cool thing uh, that I use a lot is uh, I can press smooth all, and I've set this to a hotkey. Um, quick, quick tip here: uh, anytime you want to set a hotkey in this program, you just hover over whatever it is that you want. You press end on your keyboard, and then uh, you just then you'll bring this dialog. Press combination to define new new hotkey, um, and then at that point I'll just. Uh, choose the keys that I want to be that hotkey for smooth all I've set it to control shift s so you'll see let me just escape here so if I take this I just press control shift s a few times and it just kind of erodes my whole form uh, to give me a smoother look and I'll use this a lot uh, more uh, very soon I'll show you kinda of how I use this to actually make uh, a model um, I'm just clear all this Okay, so I'll show you how I use that tool in conjunction with uh, the ability to reduce and increase my uh, my resolution of my mesh. Okay, so uh, I got my sphere tool here. This is a really really powerful tool that uh, I've started using in a in a, in a kind of a u interesting way. Um, and you'll I'll show you kind of how that works. Um, so first of all, I want to turn on my symmetry. Um, so I have x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis symmetry. Let's turn it on. And by default, uh, the symmetry plane is shown. I'm going to turn that off. So again, S is my hotkey to bring up my symmetry uh, panel. Um, and again, same thing with the options over here. Any option in our menus, okay? If we just press end over top of that option, we can define our own um, hotkey so we don't have to go into a uh, hotkey manager or anything like that we can do it all right within um, our menus which is really a, a big time saver okay so I want x-axis symmetry and I want to turn off uh, I, I don't want the symmetry plane to be visible okay so I'll just turn that off and you see I've got my sphere tool and you can see um, you can see a little floating dot okay it's, it might be hard to see but uh, you see my as I'm moving this cursor you can see another floating dot on the center and they're both centered right now and they're moving away from each other so that's just to give us an idea of where our uh, where we are in relation to the center plane so if I draw a sphere here I get a mirrored copy over here because I have my x-axis symmetry on so this is a tool I like to use the sphere tool uh, along with my symmetry to really rough out um, interesting shapes for characters um, I can size up and down my brush. So again, anytime I'm over top of my geometry, if I hold down uh, my right mouse button um, while moving, I get left and right, I get up and down uh, radius uh, of my brush. If I move up and down, 
uh, I get stronger or lesser uh, intensity for the brush okay and if I just tap without moving it brings up a voxel menu um, which I can you know do a lot of cool cool different things with my uh, with my surface but anyways I won't get into that now that's for your exploration later on um, so again I'm using this sphere tool to block in my form and if you look down here uh, my poly count is gonna increase dramatically so I have 167,000 right now um, and the more I build it out you know I'm at 264,000 uh, polygons which is a lot and, and if I go bigger and bigger and bigger things start to slow down a little bit so what I do now um, I have this option down here which is our, called resample and similar to smooth all I use this all the time um, and I've also set a, a hotkey for this uh, control shift R so I do that and it brings up this dialog where I can I have a slider where I can increase my my resolution of this mesh uh, up to four times or reduce it by a quarter or to one quarter of what it actually is currently so I'll do this all the time I have different options linear rough good and smooth um, for how I want uh, the uh, resample to be um, so you can picture this in Photoshop if you take a small image and uh, size it up you'll get um, you know you, you lose some of the details but uh, you get more density to work with um, by the same token a lot of times in Photoshop or any other drawing application um, I will reduce my canvas especially initially uh, so that I can make really big brushes and just block in my main ideas my main forms get my composition and my design working good before I uh, go into uh, add details and things like that so initially um, I like to work really uh, small I guess or low res uh, you could say um, work out my forms get my ideas solid um, keep the program really uh, snappy and responsive and then later on, when once I've decided, okay, I like the the main forms, I like the the, the kind of main gist of, of this this pose or this character that I'm that I'm developing, then I'll uh, increase the resolution um, to the point where I can add a little bit more details and, and, and refine things a little bit more. But at that point, I don't want to have to move back down in terms of resolution because then I'll start to lose some of those details that I've worked hard to put in. Okay, so. So again, I've reduced this to uh, one quarter of what it is, so 20,000 polygons, that's fairly low. Um, and you'll see we get a much more, uh, uh, not as quite as pretty of a, of a form, um, but that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, and you'll see now I can just kind of resize my brush and, and block in forms and, and just kind of mess around. And I can hold down shift key, uh, that takes me into my smooth tool. And I can just smooth things out and again everything's very quick and responsive and I can just kind of like make whatever form that I want um, any character um, and this is really good for like for me because I like to draw like creatures and stuff like that so I can always like just kind of like come up with a really neat like different shapes and forms and things like that and because my resolution is relatively low so right now 50,000 polygons once I hit my uh, smooth all so control shift s and again I, I might even reduce this further so that it'll smooth quicker um, so this is I'll play around with uh, resampling and smooth all a lot especially when I'm building on my form um, and I'll bring this down to about 10,000 or less than that so again I get a fairly rudimentary kind of like uh, uh, you know coarse looking mesh but again smooth all kind of fixes all that and then uh, I go back in with my my sphere tool and I can just uh, create you know whatever form uh, that I want and I can go in and smooth things out oops so because it is such a small um, so low res, relatively low res mesh, um, and again, eleven thousand polygons is not that small, um, especially if we're thinking about, uh, you know, like more of a base mesh modeling application, like uh, Maya or Blender or something like that, um, because those ge that geometry you're kind of like placing uh, more carefully. But in the sculpting program, that's really tiny. It's really tiny. Because in sculpting programs, you're often working with millions and millions of uh, of 
polygons and, and and stuff like that so so again so this is me just kind of like playing with shapes and and at this point it doesn't cost me anything to try out different ideas um, if I want I can go in uh, get my uh, cutoff tool and oops like I said I don't typically use the spline mode I, I rather use the uh, the lasso mode okay so I can kinda like define the shape uh, even more so um, the only problem that I run into when working with this way is that uh, I kind of if I smooth all, if my shapes get too thin and I smooth everything, then they'll disappear. So if I smooth all now, I'll start to lose these arms, as you can see. It just kind of disappears. Um, so sometimes you might want that, sometimes you don't. Um, just control Z here to get back. Um, okay, so I'm going to use my, my uh, move tool also. Just kind of move things around. Okay, so this is how I start at this point, uh, unless I'm doing something like humanoid, if I'm just like messing around, if I want to create some kind of like uh, creature or something like that, I'll, I'll generally speaking work this way. Um, if I want to create something that's maybe a little bit more uh, defined, oftentimes I will still work this way, but um, uh, sometimes I'll use more tools that are a little bit more precise, like there's the curves tool. Um, which is a little bit more similar to like say something like z-spheres where I place a series of points and and define the size of those points and the placement of them is 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 interactive um, so I can kinda get a uh, I can see what uh, what kind of shape I'm creating as I go so it's a little, probably a little bit more uh, precise in terms of making like arms and legs and things like that um, not quite as quick Okay, so I'm using my grow tool here now um, to just flesh out some of these shapes a little bit more. Okay, and when making feed, I just kind of like, oftentimes I'll just do something like that. Get my move tool. So again, I want my my main thing right now is just my uh, my proportions. So I want my character's stance to be good. I want it to pro I look at it from different angles. I want to make sure that the design is working well, um, you know, from all different angles. I don't want it just to look good from the front or the back or whatever. I want to make sure that as I rotate it, it's kind of like having that same kind of like interest appeal, has that nice uh, balance to it, so on and so forth. Um, okay, his arms are bending at a weird angle here. So this is kind of like not a humanoid character necessarily, or sorry, it's not a human character. It's definitely humanoid. Um, I find the shapes tool. I would I would challenge you. Uh, I'd love to see you guys do some uh, some uh, some insects. So characters with several legs is is pretty neat to make with the um, the sphere tool, I should say. Um, it's just really, really cool. It's really fun. Um, okay, so head. But you see how quickly, just with the move tool and and, uh, and everything, I can kind of like just block something in. I can just have something um, to work with. And I, you know, it looks good from the front, but the head looks weird from the side. So let me adjust it. Okay. That's kind of neat. So again, I would generally probably uh, work on this more. I have a nice S kind of curve going here between his uh, upper body and his legs. Um, I could do a lot more with this. Uh, and I generally probably would if I was doing this for for, for anything. But uh, I just want to kind of show you guys uh, some of the, the tool set and how it works. Okay, so big thing about working in a 3D program is moving your uh, camera to the angle that you want. 
um, to make your your adjustments. Uh, that's a huge component of it. Uh, that that coming from a 2D background, you don't deal with that as much. Um, you're not used to you're used to like moving things around and maybe zooming in and zooming out, but you're not necessarily used to. Okay, I need this angle or I need that angle, and it might at first seem like a cumbersome kind of like tedious extra step, but uh, you know persist definitely, and uh, it will it will become second nature pretty soon. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use my uh, I have another tool, cool tool called the pose called the pose tool, and just to kind of stretch out his legs a little bit more. Um, and again, with the pose tool, I have all these different options. I have many different options of of choosing which area to pose. Um, I use line mode right now. So line mode, you'll, you'll see how it works. I just kind of oops. Well, I'll go on more of a standard brush uh, so that I don't get things messed up. So that just uh, anything that's in red gets moved, um, and anything that's not will kind of uh, stay the same. So I can rotate, and it respects my uh, symmetry, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't want to rotate. Um, I do want to reset my axis so it's pointing straight up and straight down. Um, and then I can move this guy's body up, make his legs longer, and I think that is more visually pleasing to me um, and I'm not gonna perfect this right now um, what I will do actually uh, I can do control shift I I believe it is just like in Photoshop to invert my selection and then uh, I can scale up Oops. what I'll do is uh, I'll go into front mode um, hit 5 on your numerical keypad to toggle in and out of uh, orthographic mode and then if I hold shift while I move my gizmo here um, then it just moves the gizmo so it basically changes the uh, the center point of my of my transformation just like you would do in Photoshop if you move the uh, the little cursor inside your transformation box um, it's just kind of similar similar thing to that but I have to hold shift to do that and then I can size this up if I want if I want to size up his uh, his legs make them a little bit more uh, bulky I can do that so I'm pretty happy with this for now control D to deselect everything um, I'm still in orthographic mode I'm gonna press uh, uh, the number 8 key on my keyboard to get into um, the front view and then I want to flatten out the bottom of his feet so the way I do that I'll just cut off uh, and to make his feet flat Okay, so that's basically my my character. I haven't given him hands or anything like that. Uh, too time consuming at this point. But the key is is having that solid uh, structure to work off of uh, when you want to go in and detail further. Okay, so at this point, I want to resample my character. Control Shift uh, S. Oops. I'll well, just do smooth. It actually works out pretty well. Do a couple smooths just to get a nice, clean uh, form. And then Control Shift R uh, to resample. Again, these are key sets that I've I've created, and I found that bumping it up to about hundred thousand polygons is a uh, is a good uh, in between step. So I bumped it up currently to a hundred thousand. Then I can go with my Grow tool, and I can just refine. Some forms um, suggest um, more intermediate detail. So again, I'm not going to high detail yet. Uh, it's very tempting to go, you know, straight to like 50 million polygons or whatever, and try to make things. But you'll find that all your points and all your forms are not uh, they're not proper properly subordinated to a larger structure, um, and you'll have something that's kind of like It'll look like you went to detail way too soon. Okay, so right now I'm just suggesting uh, basic structures, basic forms here. Um, smoothing things out. Smooth key, the hot key for that is shift. Okay, so I'm just suggesting basic anatomy. Um, in here, maybe I want a little bit more separation. And the cool thing about working in voxel mode uh, is I can punch through 
if I want. So I can get that uh, that form here where we have that relationship between the uh, pectoralis muscle, uh, the rib cage, and the and uh, the lats in the back, and the bicep and the arm coming out here. So I'm using my cutoff tool. Oops. And I can also hit E to bring up this menu. Um, if I don't want to go up here all the time. Okay. So I can just use my grow tool to rebuild this area here and smooth it out a little bit. find some of the anatomy of the back again this stage I, I just want to kind of create the main structures the main forms no details so no sharp crisp lines or anything like that uh, big part also of 3d modeling I found or sculpting at least is kind of really uh, having that delayed gratification of building your building up to the uh, final form uh, just gradually building your structures out and your forms out until you get to the final uh, final detail phase but if the foundation looks good then chances are the final sculpt will look pretty solid once you have all your details and, and all that kind of stuff applied um, but if your if your foundation is not solid if it's not looking good chances are uh, you know, no amount of polish and detail will, will, will fix that. Okay, so generally speaking, once I kind of have a form that I like, I'll bump, I'll jump over to uh, what's called surface mode. Um, so you can see here the little V uh, next to my layer. Um, and that's a kind of another cool thing I actually didn't get into. Uh, you can create new layers just like you would in Photoshop. You can create new layers and put different things on each layer. Um, so I'll just quickly show you if I wanted to do something like that or if I wanted to try something different on a, on a different layer I can I can easily do that um, again not something we want to do right now um, I'm gonna turn that off uh, and I can uh, delete it uh, just hit on the garbage can there and it brings me back to my current layer uh, again I just want to go over to surface mode and in surface mode is more similar to a ZBrush or a mud box or something like that where we are now dealing directly with the surface we're not dealing with a volumetric form we're not dealing with the voxels um, we're dealing with an actual mesh okay so um, this is my mesh and you'll see now as I make changes um, if I use my move tool going to be a little bit different um, there's another option here remove stretching I'll just turn that, that off um, to demonstrate so now as I move things you see no new geometry is being um, created it's just kind of all the same stuff and this is where you run into that issue with other programs where you it's not called polygon stretching where you want to do something but then as you the more you do it the more your form kind of stretches out and you lose the ability to sculpt details. So if I wanted to say sculpt on this stretched out area now, um, I would have a hard time. And again, I'm going to turn off this uh, feature called remove stretching. And you see, as I'm trying to paint on this area, it's like it's really not working out right. I don't have the underlying uh, uh, geometry to give me the shapes uh, and the forms that I want. So I get this really ugly, ugly thing. Um, that's not what I want. Okay. So just back up here, okay. So um, there is a function called remove stretching, which is uh, allows us to make these big moves without stretching out the geometry, because it uh, basically.
creates um, geometry in SCSC. See, 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 after I make this move, it'll kind of resample that area. So any polygons that were too stretched out, they become uh, subdivided. Right? So I can just kind of build out a form uh, that I want. Now, a lot of people that use 3D Coat just use surface mode. They don't really go into voxel mode too much because they, they find that uh, um, surface mode, I guess, gives them a little bit more precision, a little bit more control, um, which I, I can't uh, argue with. But I, I love the the ability to freely build in a base mesh uh, in voxel mode. Okay, so let's uh, go back to our form. So you can make something like that. Um, and why not? I'll just go with that. Um, I'll suggest maybe some fingers. Now I'm not really getting into the specifics of a lot of these tools. Um, <clears throat> that's something if you if you find this interesting, you'll have to go in and, and figure that out yourself. Um, like perfecting the move tool to be exactly the way you want it to be. Um, so you can play with things like move degree. There's a slider here, um, steady stroke stuff like that. Um, and what are actually one cool thing is in 3D Coat, um, our move tool respects our alpha of our brush. That is really cool. I, I find that a really neat thing. So any brush that I use, um, my move tool will respect the alpha of it. And I'm right now I'm just holding down control while I move, and that just basically um, moves the brush outside the uh, along the the normal of that uh, area. Okay, and that goes inwards or out, inwards or out. Okay, really, really neat uh, feature. Okay, another cool thing, actually, uh, we can import brush alphas as you see uh, that I have, have here. So any Photoshop brush alpha that you want to import, you can. If you have a ZBrush alpha that you want to import, you can do that too. Um, we can also hit new here and uh, Oops, I'll just bring it out here. Okay, let me just bring my brushes out here so you can see. Um, if I hit new, then I have three options. Create using curves, um, open texture file, or cancel. So basically, um, Open texture file is, is the way you would bring in like a, an alpha, uh, something like one of these, where it's kind of like a kind of neat shape or, or pattern. Um, but create using curves is also kind of neat, where I can just define um, the fall off curve of my brush. So if I wanted to make a, a hard brush, I would have it flat against the top. Um, but if I want a nice smooth gradation, uh, I would do this. Um, and again, same same as uh, earlier. If I right click on these uh, control points, it'll uh, go through different uh, different interpolation types. So you see, I've created this brush, the alpha here, like that, which I can then use that as my move tool if I want. So really, a uh, really cool thing um, that we can do in this program. All right. So another thing that uh, that's actually really cool in this program is the new pinch tool so with this tool uh, I can create uh, sharp uh, defined areas um, anywhere on my mesh you know irrespective of uh, the overall density uh, of my mesh so um, I don't need to have a super high detailed uh, you know many million uh, level sculpt I can just create the, that detail where I want it to be and I'll just jump into a uh, wire wireframe mode and I don't have remove stretching turned on I'll turn that on and, and you'll see kinda what that does um, when I have that turned on um, you'll see how it creates the necessary density uh, that I need to get that pinch uh, that I'm asking for okay that's a really cool feature so that's that's kind of like um, allows me to have a 
an optimized mesh where it's only dense in the places where it needs to be only in the places where I really need detail if I'm having a nice smooth curve somewhere I don't have to have like a, a million polygons in there I only need maybe you know 10,000 you know so I can have a really nice smooth curve here but then over here I can have like tons of crazy amounts of detail so right now I'm using the pinch tool um, remove stretching is turned on and I have a few different options with this tool um, so my strength um, a lot of times people turn on steady stroke so that basically kind of just allows for some uh, smoothness in, in the stroke that we make okay and if I do nothing and just pinch it, it'll actually uh, extrude the surface a little bit and if I hold control then it'll dig into the surface a little bit so this is where I will generally kind of like block in uh, maybe any s separated forms, any segmented type uh, shape or, or anything like that. And again, this also respects my alpha. So right now I have like a kind of a pinch, pinch alpha, but uh, I can use other ones that I've created. And I'll just create a quick one right now create using curves so I'll just make a, a pinch really extreme pinch um, actually I'll, I'll, I'm gonna edit it and I just right click on it to edit it <clears throat> okay so even more extreme pinch um, and we'll see that it creates an even tighter uh, pinched form than what we had previously okay so even at this stage I would say I'm getting into details too early um, so let's back up here but I, I just wanted to show you what that that brush does um, we have another brush that does something similar uh, called crease clay and under here this is all the live clay tools so live clay is basically any tool that um, uses dynamic tessellation now we have options on these tools up here um, so remember we have the option for uh, remove stretching on our tools and basically what that does it, it kind of like uh, applies um, kind of like something like live clay so some dynamic tessellation anytime we've stretched our polygons too far um, so that we have like a nice even mesh to kind of work with but uh, under here under live clay we have uh, even more options so we have a detail slider which allows us to create um, as much detail as we want in a certain area so I get a really sharp form here um, and I can get even crazier and crazier and crazier so the more I zoom in and then I draw you'll see like I'm I'm like really making some really detailed strokes here you know that from way out here you're not even even really gonna be able to see but as I go in it's like it's, it's all right there and if I go into wireframe mode you see how dense uh, that area is compared to the rest of the mesh so with these strokes it, it, it that it tessellates all the geometry um, and I have this detail slider so I can bring that up or down okay if I'm five I'm at maximum uh, I can bring it down say around one so I get those strokes and you will see as I, as I make my brush smaller and smaller it just gives me as much detail as I need to create that form so if you really want really tight really fine detail uh, this is, is probably the brush you would use okay and again we can uh, stamp different things on so if I have an alpha like this and I use my stamp tool for example You'll see I can get that I can get that form right on my uh, right on my mesh, especially if I increase my detail slider. Okay, so that's pretty pretty neat. Okay, again, this is for this is probably last stages of uh, of your sculpt. If you want to apply um, ultra fine details and things like that. 
uh, this is what you would do. Um, again, I've, I've enabled a mask right now, and I can go in and create some texture based on that mask, based on the alpha of my mask. <clears throat> okay, and I can brush it on too if I want. Um, so you see as I'm rotating, I'm, things are maybe moving way too much. Um, press Shift Z um, to focus the camera on the, wherever your cursor is. So where, when you rotate, that area you're working on will stay centered. That's a really useful tip, especially for working on things like hands um, and things like that. Okay, so that's that's how you get really uh, nice, fine detail. Um, again, this is something that you'll really never see from out here. Um, you only want to put that very sparingly. Um, the other thing it does, it really, really dr drastically bumps up your uh, poly count. So if we look here, I have 111 triangles and as I paint with this I have 342 thousand sorry um, 410 thousand six hundred so pretty soon I'll be at a million and it's pretty soon after that I'll crack a million okay so again use this sparingly um, only as needed Again, you, you're free to, to kind of work with this as much as you want, but you, you can see even as I come out here, my, my everything starts to buzz a little bit. Um, I can't see it that well. I can see a little bit better in here. <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah. Okay, so we'll go back over here, just undo that a little bit. And next thing we want to do is look at uh, crease clay so I want to show you the guys a crease clay tool um, yeah so this is another really really useful tool um, very similar to the pinch tool but it gives kind of like uh, you a little bit more control over your results so it's a another tool that that uses dynamic tessellation <clears throat> And you get a nice, uh, I find you get a bit of a smoother fall off in your form. So you can you can insert details without worrying as much about it not looking um, like it's subordinated to the larger form. So you can block certain areas off a little bit more freely than you might be able to do um, with the pinch tool. Cause, so this is a tool that I use a lot, um, especially I like to make kind of like these organic uh, forms and structures. So as you see, like just like that, I'm, I'm able to kind of create um, a pretty interesting form. And as I make it bigger, I get uh, let me change my brush. Um, I, if I use not such a strong uh, pinch, so a little bit looser form, I can get a more, um, I can get a shape that that will allow me more so to just kind of uh, define a separation in in forms, rather than create like a, a really sharp pinch, which is not what I want all the time, right? Okay, again, if I press control, I can uh, invert. Okay. And then inflate clay, uh, it's general inflation brush, um, allows us to take two forms that are kind of adjacent to each other and like kind of push them out a little bit to make them look a little bit more like they interlock. 
which we get a lot in the human body. So it's, it's a little bit harder to sculpt things like that. So this is, helps us to make things look a little bit more natural. Okay. Um, the other thing we have uh, when we hold shift again that brings us back into our, our smooth tool um, but up here you'll notice we have shift action um, so you can change how shift tool works so you can set it to powerful smoothing and it will give you a tool tip uh, this type of smoothing will decimate my mesh what that means is basically it not only smooths things out but it also reduces the amount of uh, geometry um, as I smooth so I'll show you what that looks like um, go into wireframe here so I have really dense mesh in these places where I've used uh, my live clay brushes um, but if I hold shift it doesn't just smooth it also reduces uh, the amount of decimation as you can see Okay, and the bigger my brush is, the more, the greater the effect. Okay, so that can be useful when we want to um, reduce our poly count and make our mesh more workable. Um, generally speaking, the lower um, the lower resolution the mesh, the the easier it is to work with. Okay, and then we have different options here, um, but again, uh, there's tool tips for everything, so if you're not sure what it's going to do, um, just hover over that thing for a little while, and uh, something will pop up and tell you um, what it's going to do. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to get into is uh, vertex painting. That's pretty cool. So... The way we work with uh, vertex painting is we take our mesh, and this has to be, can be any mesh, um, and we bring it over to paint mode. So you have these five different tabs here, paint, tweak, retopo, UV, voxels, and render. Uh, we're going to go to paint, and that brings up a, a totally different menu, um, or sorry, different uh, screen here, and we can just paint right onto our model. Um, cool thing about this, we have layers. Um, so everything that you're used to in Photoshop, you can do in here. Um, you'll find that this is vertex painting, so it, it's dependent on the amount of uh, verte vertices underneath my brush. So if I go into wireframe mode, if I try to draw something detailed here, I won't really be able to because I don't have that dense of a of a of a geometry. But if I want to draw something dense here or detailed here, you know, I probably can uh, just because I have more underlying geometry to work with. Okay, so you see the difference? If I tried to draw this here, I wouldn't be able to. Okay, but since here, since I have a lot more density, um, I can. So another strategy is um, any area where you think you might want to have more details. Um, you can you can create a uh, higher density uh, just to set yourself up for the ability to paint now in Photoshop everything in this mode is pretty similar to Photoshop um, one thing that's different is the alt key does not color sample um, you have to use V the V key is the default for that um, so you can call it color sample off your model um, but you have to use the V key as opposed to the Alt key. And that's primarily, I think, because uh, uh, Alt key is really important in 3D applications for navigation. Um, so you can't uh, can't tie it up with something like uh, with the with the ability to color select. Okay. So that's that you can fill um, actually this is really useful um, so you have your e-panel still available here and I could if I want I'll just step down a layer um, create a new layer and I can color my whole model um, one color 
And if we look at why did it color the front and not the back, uh, that's because under E, you have this checkbox called ignore back faces. So I had that checked on. If I check it off, it would uh, color the whole thing. Okay, so I'll just show you again. Okay. And I only had to color half of it because I had symmetry turned on. Okay. So you see how it goes through? That's because I unchecked uh, remove back faces. So again, really uh, quick way to block things in. Um, another cool thing, I'll create another new layer. Uh, if I want to create a, some kind of texture across the whole character, um, I'll use that same tool. I'll change my border width here, and that is just basically the softness of the sharp softness or sharpness of the uh, the fall off on my uh, lasso selection. So I'll create another color here. Um, okay, and then I'll close this. So you see, it respected the uh, the um, alpha of my mask. Okay, and I also have uh, different layer modes here. So um, just like in Photoshop, you can have overlay mode, you can have um, pin light, you can have uh, linear dodge. Okay, so you have all these different um, options, and you also can adjust your opacity. Okay, so going back to here, um, we go back into surface mode, and we still have our um, our paint visible, which is good or bad, um, depending on you. If you don't like it, you can turn off those layers. Um, all right, and then there's one last tool that I want to show you um, in surface mode that is really really cool, and that's the uh, these brushes. So um, the main ones I like are it's under our regular surface brushes, Rapid Two, Scratches Two, and Mud Two. Um, I really really like these brushes, and I'm sure you will probably too. Um, to see how they work. Let's turn up my light a little bit here. So by default, these have remove stretching turned on. And this is just like a really nice way to build up your form. Um, it, it allows me to create um, details and forms. So usually after I come out of voxel mode, after I've created my base mesh, uh, this is this and um, and crease clay are probably the two uh, main tools that I'll, I'll, I'll start working with because this allows me to really make um, decisions about uh, the form kind of like really define um, how I want things to look and it allows me to just really uh, build up build up the form like gradually I want to turn off my steady stroke here. So I can get all kinds of little subtle um, undulations and changes in my mesh. So Rapid2 is a, is a brush that uh, is I, I, I really like to use it. Um, the other ones that I like a lot, Mud2 is good. Um, what I like about these, it helps me kind of like, I can make a brush stroke and then another brush stroke and one will just kind of blend right into the other. So I can like use several strokes to make one, uh, to kind of like complete the one uh, 
one form. Whereas if I use something like draw, you'll see that uh, draw is cool because it respects the alpha of my brush. Oh, let me turn remove stretching on here. But you'll see kind of like each stroke kind of like eats into the following stroke. I don't get like a nice smooth uh, form from doing this. So I tend not to use it as much for just building up the form. I would use it more so for um, any kind of detail that I wanted to add. <clears throat> Okay, so mud two, it's really good, and it works well with the smooth. And all of this, I'm still at a relatively low poly um, mesh. I use control to drive into the surface. Smooth to sur smooth it out. Oh, I want to turn off my powerful smooth. Just to return it back to regular smooth. Okay, so basically this allows me to define extra things like if I want some kind of bony protrusion on the surface I can use that and to further define the the main structures and planes of the face uh, really really useful for that so anything that you need, like really fine control and detail, uh, I find these brushes are are, are very very useful. Um, scratches is also a good one. Okay, and now in uh, surface mode, we also have access to the Boolean functions, um, but we get a slightly different result. Um, we get a very clean, very crisp uh, uh, kind of look to it, to the uh, to the Boolean operation. So you see now that I, I since I have this basic form now I can start applying um, a little bit more anatomy a little bit more detail to uh, to my sculpt. And the cool thing about these brushes too with remove stretching on it'll give me as much uh, detail as I need. So if I'm making a brush stroke that's too small, um, 3D Coat will say, oh, he's stretching the polygons, let, let us make uh, more detail here. Okay, and then I can use this in conjunction with, uh, I'll use my crease clay. I'll use a sharper version of it, increase my detail.
Okay, and so I'll move, bunch, bounce back and forth. Uh, I'll continue to build out my form. It needs to be uh, protruding more. I'll make my brush really uh, that the depth of it really small, so I can get those like subtleties. Okay, so you can see how I can block in uh, precise detail uh, using these brushes. Okay, and one thing, huge, huge thing about uh, 3D uh, that I haven't even uh, looked at yet and showed you yet is uh, the ability to freeze. So you can freeze, obviously, uh, in this program, um, freeze off certain areas. Okay, so uh, I've set that to, we have here a freeze. Um, I've set it to tab, so I automatically go into it and I've set it to... Uh, uh, my lasso select. Probably for this I want to uh, uh, ignore back faces. So for this, I'll use my uh, inflate tool um, for the eyes. That's a little glitch there. It looks like the So at this stage, I'm not worried too much about having like a nice, pretty, uh, uh, polished surface. I just kind of want to still block in my forms, get my structures uh, looking good. And then I can worry about polishing my mesh afterwards. So my, my thinking is uh, I would love to see more people using uh, 3D code. Part of the reason why I'm making this video, um, I think it offers such an innovative and unique tool set that uh, uh, I don't think anyone's really even begun to kind of scratch the surface of, of potential workflows or even an ideal workflow. Um, I'm still kind of like uh, searching. Uh, I kind of look at uh, the, the unique mix of tools and, and kind of try to think about um, really cool things that I could do um, using them and I think I found a workflow that, that kind of works for me uh, but I'm, I'm really curious to see how other people would approach things um, and th that kind of just happens from more and more people uh, trying out the software and sharing uh, 
sharing their work and, and sharing like kind of their their workflow ideas and things like that So again, I'm not going to go too crazy here now with the with the sculpting. Um, I just wanted to show you uh, a lot of the really cool tools. I want to show you also uh, just a couple of the differences between uh, voxel mode and, and surface mode. So with the remove stretch stretching on is really cool because uh, things like ears I can make really uh, really quickly. Okay, I'm gonna show you uh, how the Boolean tools work in, uh, in surface mode. So again, same idea. And that may be a bit of a glitch. Um, it's a little bit more dangerous probably to work with uh, the Booleans in surface mode um, at this point. Um, I could try that again. Yes. So I might have uh, some kind of a rip or a tear in there. Um, so what I could do, I could jump over into uh, voxel mode and then do the Boolean operation there. But uh, let me see if I can find another area on my mesh. Yeah, so basically that's that's how surface mode Booleans work. Um, you see I get really, really sharp. Um, sharp cut really sharp whereas in boolean mode you you are sorry in voxel mode you could see that it was uh it would readapt and and, and kind of smooth out this edge a little bit but uh, surface mode is more uh much more abrupt um of a cutoff okay all right so basically that's uh that's the main thing that I want to get into. Um, one other thing I'll quickly show you is, um, so we'll use the freeze tool. Um, say I want to smooth out everything. Um, so let me, uh, I'll uncheck ignore back faces. I want to do this on the whole thing. And I don't just have to use a, a lasso select for the freeze tool. I could also use the, um, I could also use the, uh, just like a regular brush if I want and 
and I press control to uh, to remove it. Okay, and then uh, I'll go into uh, Control Shift S, Smooth All. So again, when I press Control uh, Smooth All in uh, Surface Mode, it brings up a bit of a different uh, dialog. Um, if you remember in voxel mode, it doesn't bring up anything. I just uh, keep pressing it over and over again, just gradually smooths a little bit. In surface mode, I have a, an option to choose the degree uh, of the smoothing. Okay, so I can go between 0 and 10 by default, but if I want, I can put in a higher value. Um, so let's put in like 100, or sorry, 100, and then uh, we'll press OK. And you see, it smooths everything out. Now, if you remember when I did this in um, uh, voxel mode, anything that was thin like this would have uh, disappeared completely. It would have been completely eroded. But in surface mode, there's that actual geometry is dealing with strictly with the surface. So th these polygons are not going to disappear, but they are going to get uh, uh, you know closer and closer and closer to each other and smooth out. Okay, so that's kind of one of the, the, the key things uh, between working with surface mode and uh, voxel mode. And one of the keys to, especially when working on your base mesh, is knowing um, when to use a surface mode smooth, when to use a voxel mode smooth, um, how to kind of control your poly count, you know, for depending on what stage uh, you're at in your sculpt, and, uh, and then just kind of going from there. But uh, generally speaking, I think that uh, this program's super artist friendly. Um, it helped me a lot. Uh, I didn't even get into the retopo retopology uh, and the and the uh, painting on tops of painting on top of your UVs, um, but using this program, it kind of demystified the whole three D process in terms of uh, taking a voxel sculpt or taking a sculpt in general, um, adding retopology, um, creating UVs, and and then painting on those UVs. Uh, so. It, it just increased my understanding of the whole 3D pipeline um, because it's all within this program and it's all done really well. So I, I highly recommend it. Um, ZBrush is obviously a monster. ZBrush is a great program, um, something that I never personally got into, um, but I did try it out. But I can definitely recognize, uh, based on the art people produce with it, that it's a, that is an amazing program. Um, but uh, for, for the beginning artists, I would say this program is, is kind of like a little bit more intuitive. Um, and I think that in terms of the whole overall th process of, of creating uh, uh, 3D models and, and just understanding that pipeline, I, I think that 3D Coat is going to be a much better teaching tool um, for that person who wants to learn more about the, the 3D pipeline. Um, so I, I definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, it's only about... 300 to th to 400 dollars uh, to buy a license, uh, which is great. Uh, the forums are really good. Um, the the developer is a, I think he's like a genius, and uh, he's really responsive and, and really interacts well with his user base. And uh, he oftentimes will imp imp implement features that you that you ask, or if there's a bug, um, he'll fix it really quickly. So definitely definitely check out 3D Coat um, if you're looking for. Uh, you know a cool sculpting app to 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 figure it out um to figure out how to uh to sculpt if you're an artist or even if you're just not an artist if you, if you just want to kind of like figure out a, a sculpting tool uh that you want to mess around with uh definitely try this out i think you'll as as i did you'll definitely fall in love with it um so yeah www.3d-coat.com and uh you'll find a lot of cool art there and you will go into, be able to go into the forums and, and, and see the latest builds and everything like that. So I think I covered most of the things that, that I wanted to discuss um, regarding this program. Hopefully it was helpful to you. Um, there's so much more to cover. Um, you know, I barely uh, scratched the tip of the iceberg, but uh, I think uh, that's, you know, a good understanding of, of voxel mode and surface mode and kind of the difference between the two, how to manage your, uh, your uh, poly count. Um, cause one of the, the common mistakes, especially I made, made early on was to go up to like insanely high, uh, poly counts. Like I think I went to like 55 million or, you know, 60 million, 80 million, 
uh, way too soon, and then I kind of got locked in to whatever details I had made. I couldn't uh, adjust or, or edit them um, at that stage. So, um, let me see here. So yeah, I recommend it. Check it out. Um, expect more 3D coat videos from me. Um, again, I think on my channel I'm going to start uh, doing more tutorials and, and promoting more so uh, applications that I really like um, and that I use a lot. Some of them are, are a little bit less well known. Um, so hopefully you find it helpful. Uh, if you like these videos, like my channel. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, leave a comment, uh, ask questions. Um, that that kind of feedback is really great for me because I, I want to make a, a as good of a challenge, channel as I can. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and uh, until next time, take care.